Now, New Yorkshire, Mr. Megamouth himself, James Whale. Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, <laughs> you can come on the show, Wayne, but only if you sober yourself up. You understand me, Wayne? <laughs> Wayne? <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Wayne, it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, and uh, welcome. Whale is on again, and if we get him out of the bog a little bit later on, perhaps we'll uh, invite him to come with us. Now, uh, oh, he's a very good-looking bloke there. Uh, Derek Hatton is uh, here. Degsy? He's in makeup. Where? In makeup. Makeup. Okay, right. Uh, this way. Derek, Jimbo. how are you? How are you nice good. You. My favourite jacket, that lad. My favourite champagne socialist. How are you doing? Swashing, buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. I was so upset to see they wrecked your nice car. I know. Yeah, they broke the windscreen. I don't know. Some people just got no respect for other people's property. Some people they? believe everything they see in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. This is <laughs> true. True. What can I say? Now. You've been the butt of many scandals, which is, of course, what we're talking about tonight. Scandal. You can phone us on the number, which is uh, 0532 46 1000. And if you have a little scandal, you could uh, always fax us as well on this number. Now, <coughs> are you doing his makeup? You're just a little oh, bit yes, more, because yeah. you're very concerned about the old image. <laughs> how, <laughs> how is the scandal uh, coming along now? Well, I mean, as I said before, if you believe everything you read in the mm. press, then obviously... I mean, it's, it's scandal these days and everything like that has got far more to do with the press than it's got to do with the individuals concerned. Uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, scandal sells newspapers, and newspapers yeah. therefore dramatise, exaggerate and tell lies on a daily basis. But it's never done you any harm, has it? Oh, I don't think it's done you any harm at all. In fact, yeah. sometimes, as you know, you actually, uh, you actually blow it yourself to have a mm. laugh with them. Mm. I mean, you, you, you know... The only thing I was a, a little concerned about, Degsy, is that today's and yesterday's, you know, front page of The Sun, you didn't mention me that you were coming on the show. I mean, see, other than that, it was great. Well, it was I great. Actually, I actually thought that you actually planned it. No, no, honestly, nothing to do with me. I was going to ask you about... Uh, you've been uh, sort of... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's Angie Best and Fiona Wright and Kustark. Kustark, lady. Angie Baring, distant cousin of Princess Di. I mean, did you, oh, did you yes. sort of, where, where, where do they catch you with all these? You or do you have to get into the right place at the right games. time? You play games. You play games with them all. Because, yeah. you see, the thing is that people like scandal, don't they? Yeah, they they love like it. to see it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they love it. There's no doubt about it. I mean, all of that and most of the stuff that you know only too well, I mean, it's all games. I mean, you're either playing games with the press or they're playing games with you. You just yeah. got to make sure you play more games with them. OK, we're going to talk some more a little later when we have some phone calls and meet some other people involved in Scandal. But first, and uh, I want you to watch this, Derek, because you're going to love this, we have a, a video. It's a new one by uh, Andy Ridgely, all right? So have a little look into your mirror here and watch this. And watch very closely. Shake. OK, Shake from Andrew Ridgely. That's his new video. Do you think that's good? I thought that was good. You like that? Brilliant. Janie Jones, of course, a lady who was known for her scandals in the... Uh, Late 60s, early 70s? That's right. She turned the whole of Radio 1 upside down at one point with her parties? That's right. Flipping heck. In fact, Degsy, you and I were at the wrong time. We weren't around then. I don't remember any of that. No, you won't, <laughs> will you? But I mean, you... <laughs> <laughs> Lying devil. Ooh. You actually had... I mean, did you set out to sort of get some scandal going to make yourself a well-known person? Never, ever. Never? No, never, ever. Just happened. Yeah? How did it That's affect right. you? Did scandal affect you? Did it sort of... I mean, you, you went Well, prison, I mean, but... the topless, I was going way back, yeah. that I did the topless at a world premiere. And then I got charged on that. What year was that? Uh, 66, 67. Yeah, you went topless in 66, 67. 67. That was bad. I mean, that That's was That's right. That was first slap. topless, go down yeah. in the history books. Yeah. Yes, is the first. And then I got charged on that, you see. I never got away mm. with anything. Now you open the papers and... Tits are all over the place, yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> mine was beautiful dresses at a world premiere. Yeah, and I was charged on it. You just see, to, just sorry a minute, Jenny. Look, behave tonight, all right? <laughs> a little glamour tonight, a little titillation tonight. There's no need for you lot to get sort of. <laughs> their minds are in their pants. I have to tell you. This is it. Now, what I want to know is that when you went to prison, all right, you you were given seven years, which and is a sixteen thousand pound fine. Don't oh. forget. 
I mean, seven years for what you did was a little titillation. I mean, the news of the world and other newspapers. Making out of people happy. Yeah. I went and had uh, and sixteen thousand pound fine on top of that. When you were inside, you were mixing with murderers. I think you met Myra Hindley in there, didn't you? A house full of murderers. Yes. Did you ever think, God, I wish I'd never got into this? Well, it's just one of those things. I mean, they put me inside, and I don't know what I was mm. there for in the first place. Oh, I tell you what, I've got something interesting here. This is a record that you brought out, That's right? right. Uh, Janie well, Jones. I, excuse me. When I first came out of prison, the first thing I heard on the radio was uh, Joe uh, Strummer with The Clash, mm -hmm. and they did the Janie Jones Wall, and that's what I heard when I first came out. Okay. And Joe, then I asked to write a, mm -hmm. a song for me, and he did the House of the Juju Queen. This is a bit of it in the background. I mean, actually, it's not bad. Invisible, the power to excite. I mean, it's a bit raunchy, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So it never became a hit for you? It didn't. They didn't sure. play it, no. What about, uh, what about you doing a duet with Janie? So yeah, <laughs> couldn't sing to save me life, Jim. Of course you could. Couldn't you could do sing anything. To save me life. One thing I've always regretted: they couldn't sing. You know, when you're sitting around you having do's and stuff, you can't sing. I've always regretted that. Yeah, you've always regretted regret. that. But isn't it incredible though that uh, I mean, it's not very long ago, 1968. Not very long yeah. ago at all. And you're talking about getting seven years. Yeah. No, just 1972, I well, went Well, that's even more frightening, 72, yeah. and I came mm. out in uh, 77. 1972, getting seven years. I mean, you, you get yeah. less than that for attempted murder these days. Yeah. yeah. And, the, I mean, and I had a fantastic book that was ready to come out, and instead of my book coming out, they put the judges out, and the judge said, how disgusting and terrible what? when the trial so, um, went I mean, was it, was it because of the, the, the people who were at the parties, and there were big names and establishment people, and the, the establishment was petrified at that coming out, and they wanted to make no, sure they No, in the beginning, you. the police had it in for me because... Going Back way back in 66. Because you wouldn't let them in the party? No, in 66, <laughs> <laughs> I put them down and I, I had them for yeah. rampant corruption and I proved rampant corruption. That was a first trial. What was that? Rampant corruption. Rampant corruption. The I've never heard of that rampant. one. I've never heard now, of that. Listen, I, I wanna, love the word rampant. I bet you do. <laughs> I want to know why. I mean, we've just yes. seen the, on, on video now, isn't it? Scandal, the film, which gave us the idea to do a programme with a, a little look mm. into Scandal tonight. Why that's haven't they ever done a, a film of your life? I mean, Well, that's what they're going to do now. That's what they're discussing doing mm -hmm. with me now. Because the film came out, Scandal, and then the uh, personal services. But mm. mine will make them look and like what about a book? Well, I did the book, and yeah. the judge's book came out yeah. instead of mine. And it's <laughs> company. Mm. But his book went down. He was hoping I would sue them yeah. because there's some of my pictures in there. Okay. Book. We're going to take some calls. What I want you to do now, Janie, I mean, I don't have to tell Derek to, to chip in. It'll be a question of trying to stop him. But uh, we're going to talk to some callers, see if anybody has any views on Scandal. Before we do that, this is the new Musical Express, which actually, the best thing you can do with this is use it as a litter tray for your cat or your dog, because I think that's the only thing it's worth, worth doing with. It's such a mucky paper, it comes off on your hands, and it's just crap that's in here. But <laughs> they, uh, they do actually write a little bit about the, <clears throat> the programme with poor old Wayne, who's in the bog, as you saw earlier. It says, uh, Wales' notorious Friday night show is recorded in the north, which meant Hussey hot-footed it to the studios after celebrating. We're not recorded, this is live. What you see is what you get. And so what if it's in the north? I mean, uh, you know, what a disparaging remark. I don't like that at all. I find that very annoying. Right? Good. Spot on. Right. Mark from London. Hello, Mark. Hello, James. How are you? All right. What part of London? Um, right in the middle, Wapping. Wapping? Absolutely. Now, don't you say a word, Dexy. <laughs> OK, Mark. Well said about the enemy, by the way. Um, I wanted to know what you felt, how you felt that you'd been treated by the press. I mean, like, how, how, what um, scandal have you had attached and how much truth has there been in whatever has been said? I, so, when, when, uh, well, I quite like it. I, I actually, the only, <laughs> thing that, the only thing that worries me is when they don't put a photograph in. <laughs> you know, when they don't put a photograph in, I got very upset with Gary Bushell the other day when he said he loved the show. What a shame they haven't got a decent person to do it. Yeah, I don't like Mr Bushell much but, either. Um, but, you know, apart from, from that, and he didn't put a photograph in... That's well, you're fine. probably lucky because you would have put a bad one, you know. Can I put my mother on? Your mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, James. Yeah. James? Yeah. Hi, this is Elsie. Elsie? James, I, I was like my your son? show, but why don't you have some attractive young men on? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stand up. I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I just like the young. Elsie? Yeah. What's wrong with him? I mean, he must be one of the most eligible well, men. Well, exactly. I, I said attractive and young, not tacky. <laughs> not <laughs> what? <laughs> not what? Tacky? Could you throw me over the uh, the, the male oh, doll? The throw, throw the, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, Maggie's disguising her voice well. Yeah, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is this for you, Elsie? 
No, thank you. Hey? I like the real thing. You like the real thing? Oh, that's the best I could do tonight. Sorry about that, Elsie. Uh, right, Neil from Coventry. Hello, Neil. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Can I just say to Derek, um, not to worry very much about his car, because Arthur <laughs> Skago will make some funds available to him. As long as he gets a red car. And good one, Neil. Good one, Neil. Yes, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like you had a bit of a cold, actually, Neil. Adrian from Shrewsbury. Hello, Adrian. Hello, James. Yeah. How are you? I'm well. Yeah. Uh, I just like to say, uh, people in this country seem to thrive on uh, yeah. all the dramatisation and lies in the press. Do you like reading Scandal? Yes, yeah, certainly do. So do I. Thanks very much indeed. Good. Right. Um, what are we going to do now? I think we probably take a. Take a little break. Is that okay with everybody? We're going to take a break. Don't go away. More scandals coming up after this. 461000. He's waiting for your call now. Hello, my name is Jock. Hello, Jock. Welcome to Talk About. Join the party now. Phone Talk About on 0898 300 500. Normally, where you use two coats, you now only need one. Advance from Crown. Paint that rewrites the rules. Now, scandal, when it does happen, and as you know, we love to read it in the newspapers, see it on the television. I like scandal. Uh, it sometimes affects the family as well. Now, this is Debbie Ashby, of course, well-known, page three girl, lady about town, one of the Stringfellows set. You've seen her. But I wonder if you've met Anne. This is Anne. This is her mum. All right? Right. Now, Debbie was involved in a pretty hot scandal with Tony Curtis, wasn't she? True. Only she didn't know who he was. Did you know he was? Yeah. yeah. What did I'm you think? Young. Ish. What did you think when uh, you saw it in the papers and you, you heard all about it? Were you upset at the sort of things that they wrote or not? Um, As a mum rather than... Uh, you mean at the beginning or yeah. when she went when she went away? Mm, when she went away. When she went away. Because uh, they got quite nasty when she went yes, away, didn't they? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was absolutely disgusted. Yeah? Yeah. Why? I had, she was away five days and the press were calling every day, saying, have they gone to bed yet? And I, I knew they weren't going to bed. I knew there was nothing like that. No one believed me, but that didn't make news. And the, oh. new, the news was not our doing. We tried, yeah. to, we tried to stop the news. It's just it how was they the, twisted it. Was it. The, yeah. it was the manager yeah. who had a lot to do with not Tony doing. Curtis so got, took you away ridiculous. to a tropical island. Oh, here we go. Not quite. Ish. Palm desert-ish. Mm. And you didn't go to bed with him? No, no, nobody believes it, no. do they? Yeah, I if don't. I had, you don't believe if it. I had, mm. I'd tell you. You wouldn't. I would, on my life, I'd tell you. Of course I would. I'm not yeah. stupid. I wouldn't have let my daughter go away with him. I thought there was something like that. Mm. And people can laugh. People still laugh. If I fell in love with him and ran off with him, then she would understand. Yeah. Yes, I would. Yeah. Now, I mean, you two appeared topless together, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. First of all. No, 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 what I'm saying is that you, you didn't mind getting into the newspapers. You were prepared uh, to do that to get in. Oh, no, no. No, no. she didn't know no, they were going in the papers. Not. They used us again. So you so. don't believe that either. Yeah. No one believes that. That was done. That was the not done personal for personal use. You're not really, personal Annie, use. you're not really going to kid me that this was all against your will. It was all against my will, yeah. Yes. No, the pictures were. Absolutely. The, the guy they... sold the pictures mm. and they shouldn't have sold them. They were for personal use. It was done behind our back. For personal use? For personal use. Okay, you're going to yes. laugh. Everyone laughs. What's the point? What's the point? Oh, for what sort of oh, personal God, use God. you and your mum having photographs taken topless? <laughs> well, my dad had no money to put in his wallet, so he thought he could put our pictures in there instead. <laughs> oh, I see. OK. <laughs> so, but basically, as a mum, <laughs> the sort of scandal in the newspaper know. upset you? A lot, right. yes. OK. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody watching us tonight who uh, has been involved in a scandal. They might like to, uh, to give us a call. Now, earlier this week, you're going to love this. We're going to come back and talk in a moment. Earlier this week, uh, I popped down to London and uh, we went to Lindy St. Clair's brothel, torture chamber, call it what you will. And this is the thing that scandals are made of. Whaley goes to town. 
we're heading straight for town. Ah. Hello, this is the place I come to find out about scandal, is it? Oh yes, yes, this is where it all happens. We're all on computer, we've got fax, uh, mail shots to everyone all over the world. Really? And what's, what's this happening now? This is a fax coming through? Oh yes, it's from, uh, it's from him again. From, is it? From one house to another house. Oh <laughs> really? They don't surely send you faxes. Yes, they trust me. They're my, they're my boyfriends. Now on the computer, you have a whole list of famous names and addresses. Yes, I keep them all on computer. And um, every year, Christmas, Valentine's Day, birthdays, Easter, they get uh, a lot of mail shot from me. And um, this is one of the ways I procure my very good, prominent men. I'm the cream of the crop, James. I'm the best. I've got the experience. So how much if they want you? If they want me, well, if I like them, they have it for nothing. But if I don't like them, then they can pay probably um, 500 quid, I suppose. 500 quid? Yeah. What do they get for it? Well, I might spank their bum, put them over my knee, hang them upside down from the ceiling, stand on them wearing stiletto high heels. I mean, there are men that like to have a big strapping woman sit on them and crush their bones. Really? So I sit on them and roll around and that costs them a grand. Right, well, I'll, um, I'll just take myself and have a little look round. Is that OK? Oh, whip, crack away, whip, crack away, whip, crack away. Oh, Am I going the right way? Yeah. Well, this is where it all happens. On my... I can't concentrate. <laughs> well, this apparently is where it all happens. A torture chamber in the heart of London. I mean, there are things here that you just wonder what on earth they're used for. And the sort of people that come to a place like this, well, they come from the judiciary, from government, they come from the pop world, you name it, and they probably come down here. <sighs> Lindy! Yes, I'm here. Oh. Oh my God, Lindy, uh, uh, what the hell is this? This room, um, the men that want to be in baby wear, nappies, bonnets, booties, they want to have a little suck, yeah, yeah, and they want yeah. to be mothered and have to yeah. be breastfed, you see. It doesn't look very clinical, very clean. Oh, yes it does. Look, how clinical can you be? Look, we've got funnels, we've got rubber tubes, behind you over here we've got enema they... cans. I mean, how clean can you be? Look, boxes, yeah. boxes of rubber gloves. Look, yeah. I mean, how clean can you be? You've told me what, uh, politicians come here? Politicians, cabinet ministers. Yeah. I mean, they can't say to their wife, um, darling, dress up in a rubber mac and uh, give me some amyl nitre and hang me on the rack and whip me. You see, there's not many places that cater for disgusting, bizarre debauchery. Yeah. I'm one of yeah. the very few that do this. But aren't you, I mean, aren't you worried about it getting into the newspapers or now it's going to be on television, nobody's going to come here. No, I never mention names and my clients have been with me for 20 years and they've, they know I don't name names. They know they're safe with me and they keep coming here because they're frightened to go to bimbos that will kiss and tell. Yeah. Laura, bring some money, darling. <laughs> oh, very nice. Is the money always, um, yes. Always brought like that, is it, the money here? Oh, yes. Usually Laura's naked, but she's a yes. bit shy, a bit, yes. bit camera shy. Yeah. Well, tell me, Lindy, there must be one person you would like to meet that's never been here. Who would that be? I've been obsessed with Geoffrey Archer, the ex-Tory MP and novelist, and I've been obsessed with him ever since he shook my hand in Cowbridge when I was electioneering for the corrective party. I'm just crazy about him. I wish, I wish he would uh, acknowledge my letters. I send him letters and invites to my parties, but he blanks me. You're just doing that for publicity, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm crazy about him. Crazy about him. Really? Mm -hmm. he's, he's the man he for me. He couldn't come to a place like this, though. Probably not, but all the same, if I had my choice of being with any man, I would choose Geoffrey Archer. He's waiting for your call now. It's, uh, I'll give you the address after the show. Well, I'll tell you, you what, they must yeah. be nuts, that lass. Well, I, I, I listen, I wonder if people who go down to, uh, to a place like Lindy's and Claire's, uh, I mean, they can't be right 
in the head if they're, they're worried about getting into the press. I mean, they must have awful, awful boring lives, uh, wasn't they? So was that like your that parties, thing? Jenny? I mean, did your parties sort of get going like that or not? No, darling, it was Claridge's and the Dorchester and oh, very high cream, not me. all this riff-raff and yeah. rubbish. No, 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 it was just <laughs> ordinary show business <coughs> parties. Derek would have been there. Tops, yeah, no, he wasn't show business. We no, but I mean, he would have been now. there now, wouldn't he, if you oh, didn't yes. you know, if you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, did people catch <laughs> If I had one now. <laughs> hey, stop it. I mean, would you, have, would you have frequented? You don't remember that because you were only, uh, how old at the time, uh, eight and sixty-eight? One. Yeah, nearly caught you. Nearly <laughs> caught you. Um, well, that's right, because we were two, Jim. We were two, yeah. Oh, I was minus six then. Would you, would you have gone, do you think? I don't think so. No? No, I'm a bit sure. Would you, would you, you know, the glamorous Listen, girls? Listen, if you go to a show business party mm. and there's all of the stars there and all of show business and they want to go up into the bedroom mm. and have a high diddle diddle on the bed and yeah. two or three of them have a little orgy, yeah. so they go up and have... What's wrong in that? If all parties, yeah, die doors, rest her soul, and all that, she had loads. I of suppose the thing, the thing, what am I doing? Uh, the thing is, <laughs> it's a prick, isn't it? Uh, the right. thing is that that you were charging people to go to your parties, weren't never. you? Never. But they did say no, that's what you did. Didn't no, they? no, they never did. Mm. You must read up on it. Not one penny ever took place in my house. If out of work actresses wanted to go as escorts to. Uh -huh. Dorchester, Claridge's, yeah. they were the top diplomats, then they'd get a fee. If they wanted to go and drop their drawers afterwards and get extra, that yeah. was nothing to do with you me don't, or anything else. You don't do this sort of thing now? Darling, no. Mind after appearing on this so. programme again, I wonder. Seven years yeah. porridge and £16,000 fine. Perhaps not, perhaps not. Perhaps I'll wait, not. I'll wait for the film to come out. That's now, right. Derek, um, I see you're on front page again, but you, you, you've... Um, Hatton is uh, being chased by government investigators for failing to declare how much money his firm has made. You made a few bob. He says you're likely to get a two thousand pound fine. That doesn't sound an awful lot. I was lot. just going to say. I mean, that's all I get. I, mean, I wouldn't be so bad anyway. I mean, it's a sort of. I mean, you're. Yeah. you're first of all, you're not surprised to read yeah. stuff like that. And secondly, I'm surprised to even look at the sum. I've got. I love it. I love it. Are you uh, don't? It, no. Listen. I mean, I've got to ask you. Look, never mind about the sum. I have to ask you. Go on, I know you employ a top-notch publicist from time to time. I mean, does he get you into all these sort of little bits? Don't of you don't use him now. I haven't used him for a while. No. Um, no. I mean. Yeah. But certainly, uh, if you talk about Michael Clifford, he's probably he's one of the best in the business. Yeah. Anyway, there's no doubt about that. I mean, did you ever see after after you finished sort of being involved loosely in politics? Did you then really make a, a conscious effort to become a personality? No, I think that after the after the after the politics, obviously the image has to change. Yeah. If you can do anything else because after politics, politics was no more. Right, there had to be something different. So you had to be looking towards, if you like, a, a, a different form of image, mm. and that required a little bit of work and a little bit of input. Um, but since then, things have sort of taken. The, well, I mean, you know, things Come have out taken. Come with me, their, darling, and you get some scandal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> things Debbie, have taken their course. You've got some, some calls for me. Debbie's got me, me calls over here. Uh, cue camera th one. Can you do that again, Debbie? Sorry, and can we cut to camera one? Just a dirty old man, really. That's enough. <laughs> good. Fine, thank you. Uh, right. Look at these two. Have you seen his glasses? Of, 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 <laughs> over here. Can you see over here? Look at his glasses. She look at me like that. Uh, Alan from Bristol. Alan, hello. Hello, James. Y yes, Alan. I'd like, I'd like to know if you've been in a scandal, for example, one of your bimbos. Would you? You'd like to know that, would you? Aye. Yeah, tough. Uh, Jenny from Cambridge. Hello, Jenny. Hello, James. How are you tonight? Very well, very well, Jenny. You're looking well horny, you know. Am I? Yeah, there could be loads <laughs> of scandal between me and you. Only you'd let it. I, I mean, do you realise this is the sixth time I've been on your show and I'm still not a bimbo and I'd be such a wonderful bimbo and we could do loads of scandalous things on telly. I really think you should have me up there and, uh, and on the show. Well, could you send us a photograph, Jenny? I mean, you know, you might be ugly as sin and we, don't, we wouldn't I'm be into it. I'm not ugly. How can you? I'm not as ugly know. like you. Well, I'm send us a photograph <laughs> then, you stupid... Uh, right, David from Leicester. Hello, David. Is there any truth in the scandal that uh, Derek Hatton used to be a rent boy and that... Uh, no, no, no. I think that was all exaggerated, wasn't it? There's obviously truth in the rumour that he's a divvy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was good. I like that. Very good. Very good. Very good. I like that. Sorry, David. Oh, I suppose it's Leicester. Uh, Paul from Gloucester. OK, Paul. Good evening, Derek. Oh, you want to talk to Derek? Yes, please. OK, well, just, just shout out, Paul. <laughs> I want to know if he's got any resemblance to uh, Billy Corkloff, Brookside. 
Now that's funny you should say that because I thought you look a bit like Billy Corbin. A lot of people have asked that, yeah. Um, Are you related but, to him? No, a lot of people ask if he's my very oldest brother, you know, but he's not. What was that, Paul? Has he got the same jag as you? Hey. Has he got the same no, jag as year, you? It's a year older, I think, Paul. <laughs> okay, thank you, Paul. That was pretty nabby pabby phone calls. We want something a bit more spice, okay? We'll take a break. Don't go away. Out of box! Out of box! The James Whale! Earthlings, satellite television is dying. We cannot survive without the program you call the James Whale Radio Show. Any program can fill a nighttime schedule, but only one can get ratings. Our contract people will soon be negotiating. You have been warned. Now, uh, scandal. What you need for scandal is a real hack journalist. Well, I don't know whether Peter Grimsditch is a hack journalist. He's uh, the new editor of the paper yet to get on the streets, The Sport, on Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah. Which hasn't come yet, but you work for a lot of other newspapers, Peter, haven't you? In the, in the past, yeah. I've, I've worked on provincial newspapers, the Sunday Mirror, the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, uh -huh. Rivali. I edited the Daily Star. Now, what makes a good scandal? What do you need to make a good scandal? Well, basically, you need a load of hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's yeah. no well well that's 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 precisely it and that's why Britain is the best place to have good scandal stories. I mean, if you were a French politician, you'd be criticised for not having a mistress. Uh -huh. If you're a British politician, then you make good page one news because you've got one. So, on the one hand, in this country, of course, we are all uh, terribly off people doing anything they shouldn't do. On the other hand, we want to get out there and get the papers just to read the dirt. Well, yeah, yeah. Ab ab so, I mean... Absolutely. Because I I I remember, uh, for example, when. Uh, um, I turned over uh, Win Winston Churchill uh, when he was having it off with Sir Ryan Khashoggi. And uh, we, we couldn't uh, prove it because the libel laws are so strict. So what I, what I did was I ran a story down one side saying Sir Ryan names MP in, in, in court case, you know, it was what, 1979. And down the other side we did, uh, we did a spoof opinion poll on what the uh, Conservative voters of Stratford thought, mm -hmm. of, uh, thought of Sir Ryan. Two, two o'clock in the morning, um, he confessed, you know. Yeah. It, and, and, and the only reason why it was news at all, for God's sake, is because one doesn't expect a Conservative MP or any kind of MP to be having it off. Well, why uh, not? They're, they're just the same as everybody else. I mean... Yeah, but, no, but, this, yeah, but this, is, this is Britain, for God's yeah. sake, you know. Um, that's my Thank wine, you. too. Anyway. So what makes a, a good scandal apart from that? You need some well-known personalities. It's no good talking about Mrs Smith and Mr Rogers down the road, is it? No, because if, it, if it's sex, they, they become uh, good sexy stories. I mean, mm. you, need, you need Fergie's dad going into a massage parlour. You don't mm. expect Fergie's dad to, to go into a massage parlour. Why? Because he's Fergie's dad. How do you and feel, I mean, about the people? Do you, do you feel sometimes, oh, I can't write this, I'm going to ruin these people's lives or not? Well, I have any I sort of first, moral first, judgment. First, first, first of all, I think uh, you've got to split people uh, into uh, uh, the, the rich and the famous, and those who depend upon uh, uh, being famous for making loads of money. And I think a totally different set of rules apply. Um, if you've got some poor sod living in the back streets of mm. Oldham, then yes, you can very easily uh, ruin their lives by revealing this, that, and the other. And I think you've got to have a much higher moral value um, on, on whether so you, 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 you wouldn't worry too much about what you wrote on uh, Degsy, as long as it was true, obviously. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest um, bugbear about writing anything about Degsy, and we had, we had a good story um, on Degsy in, in the office yeah. uh, for the sport last Thursday. We didn't print it. What, hold it. Tell me about it in a few minutes, OK? Yeah. Don't forget yeah. that. Keep that move. This is yeah. Gary Moore, Oh Pretty Woman. <laughs> We're on an intercity train travelling from London to Leeds in search of Elvis Presley. With me are four young ladies who've been on the train all day. Girls, I wonder if any of you have seen the legendary Elvis Presley, who we've heard is on this train. Yes, he was on it last week. He's not been on it today, but he was on it last week. Unfortunately, he was sitting in standard, so we couldn't attend to his needs. I see. But is he a regular traveller on the train? He's regular, I put it like that, yes. Yes. Tracy, have you seen him lately? I've just seen, not last week, because I was on holiday last week, but yes. he has been on in the past. I have seen him in the past. So there it is. Elvis Presley 
obviously is still alive and well and travelling on Intercity 125. <laughs> Right. Hello. Right, before we get into the mail, we did that little bit of funny business on the train because in a couple of weeks' time we're doing a programme on Elvis Loonies. Now, sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, you know, the sort of people who think he was a god or uh, was like he a... Yourself. Like myself, yes. really, you know, very sexy. That's mm. nice. Debbie's chatting now, getting relaxed, you know. No, you haven't uh, asked me any questions. I will in a moment. <laughs> now you've undone your, uh, your jacket and you've relaxed a bit. Do you mind if I carry on? OK, sorry. Go Fine, on. thank you very it's much indeed. Good. Uh, so if you have any views on Elvis, if you're an Elvis freak, maybe you're an Elvis lookalike, would you get in touch with the James Whale office at Yorkshire Television, the address of which we'll give you a little later, and ask for Gordon. Now, there we are. That's a fax that's come through. Can we, can we see that? I don't know if, you, if we, can, we can see. That's not too bad, is it, really? Uh, that apparently is a scandal that I'm likely to be in fairly soon. But uh, not bad, not bad. Let's carry on with the letters. We had a load of letters, so before we go any further... Oh, and there's one more. Members of the uh, James Whale Honorary Fan Club. <laughs> Uh, who reside in a, a home for, uh, for, for ladies of the cloth. Now, thanks for the letters. So far this week, Christopher Hussey, yes, another Hussey on the programme in Crawley, has said, uh, I've never seen such a biased discussion being orchestrated by a dictator. Mwah. That was on the immigration programme. I believe that the way ghettos are occurring around the country is a worry and feel that unless something is done to limit immigration, Enoch Powell's forecast of racial strife will happen. So, from one Mr Hussey's comments to the comments on another Mr. Hussey. Anthony Bennon in Redditch says, Now, do you see the trouble you cause by having those psychics and mediums on, as we did the other day? The mediums must have summoned up the dead during the show and created that rock person. Um, because it, uh, if it, his body wasn't dead, his brain certainly was. Is he still in the bog? I suppose he is, isn't he, really? Uh, John Banal. Banal in name, banal in nature, from Peterborough, who's a retired colonel in the security forces, says, Good on you. It really made my day when you put that foul-mouthed idiot hussy. This creature is an insult to all ma males. And this is interesting. Uh, Michael Bowers from Cluid, North Wales, has written in to complain about the rather explicit German channels that can be picked up on his satellite dish. I think they should be banned and we should get some British porn onto our great British screens. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Uh, and three Lancashire nurses, this is good, three Lancashire nurses, Lynn, Sandra and Olwyn, have sent in this willy measuring device. They want to know what colour I get up to. I have to tell you, I'm right in the white. Might not mean anything to you, but it'll certainly mean something to them. Little present for you, Dixie. Really okay, no, you'll enjoy that. <laughs> now, the address to uh, to send in your letters, <laughs> if you would like to comment on this program or any other, is coming up on your screen now. Send it in to Wales Mail, care of Yorkshire Television, the Television Centre, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. Any suggestions, of course, to people you'd like to see on the program? Now, are we going to uh, have a have a, a little chat with Debbie here because you know she hasn't said anything for a while, and we'd like to look at her again. Debbie, do you think, I mean, you, you've not been in the newspapers involved in a scandal since you were photographed coming out of Stringfellows with me. So it's, <laughs> um, it's probably about time you did something to get back in, isn't it? Oh, I'm a bit past that now, James. You're a bit past that yeah. now? What future is there for a sort of a, a blonde, um, the, 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 page three? Um, with brains. With brains. With brains. With brains. Uh, Anything I choose, I haven't decided yet. You haven't. I'm living off the money I earned. Oh, oh we'll take some more calls. We'll take a break. Oh, yeah, right, OK. Last week we asked you what birth sign I was. Debbie, get stuck in there. And um, not very well lit there, is it? Right, the, uh, the winner... <laughs> 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 that was a technical term for those people interested in television. Uh, the winner, of course, Taurus is absolutely right. May the 13th, clocking up a nice 38 years on your next birthday. Pratt. Uh, and that comes from Karina Cox of Nelson in Lancashire. So you win a rather... A rather entertaining game that I wouldn't understand. This week's competition, a wonderful prize for this week's competition, relates to our uh, production assistant, whose name is Wendy. In fact, those of her 
closest friends call her Bendy Wendy. <laughs> and it's her birthday. <laughs> it is her birthday today. <laughs> Actually, Derek hasn't met her yet, but after the show, Derek, we're going to introduce you. Uh, now, the clip that you saw earlier, where we were all down in uh, Lindy St. Clair's torture chamber, there were a number of girls on that clip, and we're going we're to show you. Uh, was it the blonde? Was it the girl on the bed? Uh, was it the girl in the mask? Or was it the maid at the end? All right, there was the blonde, the red, uh, the bed, the mask, and the maid. A, B, C, or D. Which one do you think was actually Wendy, our production assistant on this program? Put down your choice on a sealed envelope. <laughs> oh dear, there's a little noise going on in the, uh, in the box. Has she passed out? Never mind. Uh, the prize is, for the, which one of you gets it right? The prize is a night out of place of your choice with Wendy, all right? So <laughs> the second prize is two nights out. <laughs> so send them in to uh, Wales Mail Care of Yorkshire Television, etc., 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 and we'll read out the winner next week. Good. Now, should we take some more calls? Can we do that? I think we'll take some more calls. Where are the calls? Who knows where the calls are? Ah, hang, hang on, here we go. Uh, Chris, hello. Hello, yeah. Hello, James. Yes, Chris. I'd like to ask um, Derek if it's true, the stories I was reading in the tabloid press, that... Um... No, right, next one. Duncan from Bradford. Hello, James. Yeah. Can I speak to Derek? Yeah, just get, yeah. carry on, Duncan. You yeah, take up too Derek. much time. A um, few years ago, you were never out the papers, but then you were Derek the loony lefty, the enemy of the... We've done all that again. We've done all that again. Right. OK, <laughs> Pillocks. Sorry, I've got something interesting. Sharon from Doncaster. Hello. I'd just like to tell you, you were on about to Derek earlier, how the scandal never hurt him, but it can because... My auntie was murdered a couple of years ago, and they printed that she was a prostitute, and uh -huh. that she'd got this, they've got this photograph album with all this skimpy underwear yeah. and sexy poses. And what it was was a family album, and they brought it up in the court, yeah. and they said that um, they denounced it all as lies and said it was rubbish. But we ended up with people phoning yeah. us up. So obviously, in that in that case, it was much more difficult for you to to to, to bear, really. Yeah, they phoned yeah. us up and said that yeah. she was slag and she deserved everything she got. An well, that was court. nasty. And it, Peter, would uh, would it, journalists do that? Do they behave like that? You hear some frightening stories that journalists behave pretty nastily, don't you? Well, yeah. I mean, you had some frightening stories around the time of the Hillsborough disaster when yeah. uh, when you got some journalists going around Liverpool hospitals yeah, with white coats on yeah, and right. cameras in their pockets so. and uh, whatever. And we on the spot don't do that. People may slag us off for many things. <laughs> no, no, they may slag no, us I off mean, for many you, things. I'm just you don't have any thing. news in the sport. Let's be oh, honest of course about we have news in the sport. We have every court case that's worth yeah. reading in the sport. Peter, before we forget, that story you were telling me about in the newsroom about Degsy. Yeah, well, I can't tell you about it because I'll get sued for twice as much on Yorkshire Telly, I'm sorry, on TV, um, as, as I would have done for, uh, for the sport. But, um, well, I'll give you, give you a few clues. Um, <laughs> just, but only no, a just few be clues. careful. My but briefs, only, but my briefs listening. Um, the sport out on Wednesdays and Fridays, guys. Um, the yeah. sport is... Um, <clears throat> You've forgotten what the story is, haven't you? No, I haven't. I thought actually. we were going to get an exclusive um, there, Derek. I'm sorry I about that. I'm sorry about that. Hang on just a minute. I want to say hello to uh, Pippa. Hello, Pippa. Hello, James. Yes, Pippa. It's a question for Derek. Yes. Has he, or would he ever, pose for a centrefold? Yes or no? No. Why not? Because no. Isn't there enough money? Well, OK, a million. Right. Good, good a million. Right. A million. The That's mothers. Important. The mothers. And sponge. Camera one, behave yourself. Thank you very much indeed. That was part of Debbie Ashby. Um, so what are we going to do to sort of have a little bit of a scandal? I mean, you've, you've had your car vandalised. You've got a job on the sport. You're about to make a film. That's right. You are uh, still about to eat my cat. About to what? Eat my cat. Debbie Ashby eats cat. Woolly. Woolly. Oh, woolly. A pretty star at Hampshire. Yeah. Well, at least she didn't say she's going to eat pussy. But anyway, um, <laughs> oh. any, com any complaints, 061 814 0424 for open air, of course, next week. We always like to give it a mention this time of the programme. Don't ring us with the complaints. Ring open air on Monday and say hi to my friend Eamon. And mine. And your friend, oh, and your friend Eamon as well, yes. And um, Janie, I'm, I'm really interested. When, when you decide that the film is, is going to come out and they're going to do the film, I don't know, but I think Derek and Debbie would probably make a nice leading man and a leading lady. Oh, I'd have to kiss That's him then. That's right, I'd have to think about that. You don't mind kissing him, do you? Why? Oh, Sorry, what's wrong with kissing him? I mean, I thought... <laughs> Gee, if you can kiss Tony Curtis, you can kiss anybody. He doesn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't what? I didn't kiss him. It's a He's typical a journalist yeah. then to yeah. put words in your mouth. Where else would you like words? No, I sorry. I don't put um, words in your mouth. 
I, I was thinking that we have sat here for an hour on yes, this show. You did. And so far, mm -hmm. Degsy hasn't yes, mentioned the biggest scandal of all. Well, I would have thought the biggest scandal as far as he's concerned. And that was the poll tax. It hasn't actually come out of his mouth once. Have you given all that up or not? I haven't so, given so. thoughts about it up. I mean, yeah. obviously, I'm not as... Uh, I don't get public platforms for it anymore. I mean, yeah. I could do, but I, I refuse yeah. to do it because you can't, comp you can't mix the two. But yeah. I thought yesterday was very interesting, didn't you? I mean, the election is yeah. off. I'm well, yeah, yeah, I'm not what? saying yeah, I'm but, not getting involved. Playboy, in Playboy, Degsy, it's a, much, it's a more entertaining life you've got now. I mean, okay, those those left wing loonies who, who smashed the car up. I yeah. mean, you know, you no, don't they weren't worry left wing loonies. I actually know exactly who it was who did it, yeah. and it was not a left wing loony at all. It was nothing to do with that, um, and it was just sort of uh, the son who presented that whole class war yeah. bit, which was nothing to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we picked that up. I'll come back for you later, okay? <laughs> okay. So you don't have to kiss Derek, all right? Right, Derek. Oh, I know that. that. Come, come with me. Good. Derek, uh, oh, thank you, by the way. Thank you both very much indeed. And before we go, next week's program is on the legalization of drugs. It's a serious one next week. If you have any views on the legalization of drugs, please watch next week's program, one o'clock. Derek, <coughs> come outside. Come outside. Bloody windy, isn't it? Um, I know your car was knackered, all right? Oh. And I have got, I've got the latest Mercedes here for you. It's a 500 SL. And uh, I just thought, Derek, that, um, that this would perhaps, it would make all those horrible people who are jealous and nasty and everything else, they cringe. Get in and feel, yeah. feel Come on with us. Come on with us. Come on. Come on, come on with us. Come on, let me come on. with us. No, no, she's, she's got to stay. Are you coming, Jim? Well, look. Can get I in. You get in the back. Come on, you okay, come right. in. Okay, um, right. Okay, we're back uh, next Friday, the legalization of drugs. Degsy and I are going to hit the night spots of Leeds tonight. In the meantime, slow down a bit, I haven't finished yet. In the meantime, have a nice weekend, all right? And um, join us again next week just after one o'clock. So from all of us on The James Whale Show, a very good night to you. And have a nice weekend, all right? Bye. Right. Woo! I tell you what, some motor in it. <laughs>